Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nellis where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the water soluble vitamins and the fat soluble vitamins. Water soluble vitamins include vitamins B and vitamin C. How about the fat soluble vitamins? They are vitamin K, vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin A. Then we talked about choline, which is not a vitamin, but it's a vitamin-like substance that's also water-soluble and important for your body. Then we started talking about minerals. In this video, we'll talk about zinc. In the next videos, we'll talk about copper, selenium, chromium, and iodine. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order. Let's start with some cases. Here's a patient, short stature, delayed growth, decreased sexual development, hypogonadism, as well as erectile dysfunction, no pubic hair. What's going on? Here's a second patient. When he was well nourished, everything was hunky dory. However, as he became malnourished, he lost weight, no surprise here, but he also lost the sense of smell and his taste for food. What is going on? He also developed poor wound healing. Patient number three, poor wound healing again. Dermatitis started as the first symptom. Chelitis, which is inflammation of the lips with a perioral rash around the mouth. The patient also complains of ringing in the ear. So it's dermatitis, chelitis, subjective tinnitus, leukonychia, and poor leukocytic functions. Leuco means white, nikia means nail, white nails, and my white blood cells are poor. I cannot fight infections. Patient number four is a youngster, cannot smell, cannot taste. Yet again, GI disease, gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea or any others, and a weird rash that is peculiarly on the distal parts of the extremities. So mostly not here, but here, not here, but here. Patient number five, even before pregnancy, her immune function was weak. She had many infections, eye problems, neuropsychiatric problems, and when she got pregnant, she got many pregnancy complications. All of these symptoms mimic diabetes. Oh, by the way, she can develop diabetes too. What all these patients have in common is zinc deficiency. Without zinc, you will be short, you will not grow, delayed development, no pubic hair, hypogonadism, you will lose your sense of of taste and smell, which by the way are related to one another. Usually, if I cannot smell, my sense of taste decreases. Poor wound healing, ringing in the ear, rash around the mouth, inflammation of the lips, white nails, gastrointestinal symptoms, acrodermatitis. Together, we call them acrodermatitis enteropathica, many infections, eye problems, psychiatric issues, and pregnancy complications. Zinc is a mineral. It's a transition metal in the middle of the periodic table. And you will recall from the previous video on minerals, when we talked about the periodic table, that cadmium and mercury can replace zinc of the RNA polymerase, leading to no protein synthesis. One of the reasons why zinc deficiency is so bad for you. To understand why specifically cadmium and mercury replace zinc, watch the previous video. It's all about chemistry and the periodic table. As you recall, nutrients are either macro or micro. Macro are needed in big quantities like proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Micronutrients are needed by your body in lesser quantities like vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are coenzymes or precursors to coenzymes. How about minerals? They are cofactors for the enzymes. Example, zinc is a cofactor for DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase. Zinc is a micronutrient or micro element or trace element whose deficiency can be serious, although very unlikely to be fatal. Now contrast that with something like sodium deficiency. This can lead to coma and death. Potassium disorders can stop my heart. So zinc is a mineral. Zinc is inorganic, i.e. not carbon. Zinc is small in size, relatively speaking. And zinc is a cofactor for many enzymes. When your body needs less than 100 milligram per day of that mineral, we call it micro mineral or trace mineral, such as zinc. Many countries recommend that you take in 10 milligrams per day. But according to the textbook that I read from India, they recommend a slightly higher dose of zinc per day. Why is that? 
I'll tell you soon. So minerals are micronutrients. Sometimes they are building units of structures in your body. For example, calcium is important in the bones, teeth, etc. They are cofactors for enzymes. In fact, one third of your body enzymes require a mineral of some sort. They participate in the catalytic process by helping catalytic enzymes and they stabilize your DNA and RNA, especially the doozy magnesium. But be careful, do not overdose on minerals. Do not overdose on vitamins either, but your kidney can handle vitamins. But if you overdose on minerals, you can cause some serious toxicity to the tubules of your kidney. Since zinc, belongs to the transition metals, the enzymes aided by zinc are called metalloenzymes. Contrast that with metal-activated enzymes. These are the enzymes activated with uh, something belonging to alkali or alkaline earth metal ion. But look at zinc. It is tightly, not loosely, tightly bound to the enzyme. And this enzyme will serve a catalytic function. So I hope by now you understand the difference between macronutrients and micronutrients. And the micronutrients, you understand the difference between vitamins and minerals. And you understand the difference between water-soluble vitamins and fat-soluble vitamins. And the difference between macro minerals and trace minerals. Okay, metacosis, I consume zinc in my diet. Good for you. Now zinc will be absorbed, i.e. it will cross a membrane from your gut to your blood. This absorption process is interfered with by many factors, including excessive copper intake, excessive calcium intake. Maybe you watch Matt Stoney on YouTube eating 10 boxes of cereal with milk. Well, too much milk, too much calcium, you will not absorb zinc that day. The same goes for copper and phosphate and fibers and phytates. You will hear the word phytate or phytic many times in chemistry. They are present in fruits and vegetables. And that's why if you are a strict vegan, you are at a higher risk of zinc deficiency. And that's why the textbook that I'm reading from an Indian author recommends a higher dose because there are more vegetarians in India, relatively speaking, more consumption of fruits and vegetables, which have many advantages, but they contain fibers and phytates, and they may interfere with the absorption of zinc. Moreover, if you look at zinc deficiency across the globe, it is more common in poor countries where the consumption of beef, chicken, fish is relatively low. So here is everything you need to know about the doozy zinc. We talked about its nutrient, micronutrient, micromineral or trace element. It's an ion, which means it's water soluble. It's a transition metal in the periodic table. It is found in your body, in your bones, teeth, kidneys, Kidneys, prostate gland, red blood cells, and white blood cells. That's important. And that's why zinc deficiency equals what? Weak immunity, infections. Oh yeah, because my immune cells are toast. Zinc plays three roles and has three motifs. The three roles are a catalytic role, a structural role, and regulatory role. Catalytic, well, zinc metalloenzymes, i.e. the enzymes that need zinc as a cofactor, well, that's a catalyst. Enzymes are catalysts. Structural, the zinc fingers, not to be confused confused with your middle finger. More on that soon. Regulatory function. It regulates transcription and translation. How come? I told you that DNA and RNA polymerases require zinc. Where do I get zinc from? Well, on average, animal sources are richer in zinc than plant sources. When we talk about selenium, however, in a later video, it's the other way around. Plant sources are better for selenium than their animal counterparts. So beef, liver, eggs, oyster, clams, and milk are better than black beans, spinach, and legumes. I did not say that these have zero zinc. No, I did not say that. But they do have fibers and phytates that interfere with zinc absorption. Do you remember the old cartoon movie about Popeye the sailor who used to eat lots of spinach and develop tons of muscles you know why they do not air that cartoon anymore oh because he was smoking and he was a bad role model for children nonsense that's a bunch of bilge water they banned the cartoon because spinach contains phytate which interferes with the absorption of iron which means Popeye will never be able to build too much myoglobin in his muscle it was biochemically inaccurate. That's why they took it down. I'm joking, of course. Adequate intake is between 10 and 15 milligrams per day. If you're pregnant, you probably need 15 or more. The absorption in the gut depends on metallothionine. 
It's the same transporter that transports copper. And that's why too much copper interferes with zinc absorption because they compete for the same protein. Conversely, too much zinc interferes with copper absorption. So later when we talk about copper deficiency in the next video, I will tell you that one of the causes of copper deficiency is zinc excess. What are the lovely enzymes that require zinc as a cofactor? The famous carbonic anhydrase. Do not forget your chloride shift phenomena of your red blood cells. Zinc is important for DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase. If there is no replication, transcription, translation, what going to happen. You're not growing short stature. You're not developing hypogonadism, impotence, no pubic hair. Zinc is important for a protein known as gustin. What is a gustatory signal? Taste signal in your brain. Taste gustation. So gust in is a protein of taste. So without zinc, what do I get? No sense of smell, which decreases my sense of taste. Next, the enzyme superoxide dismutase, which neutralizes the superoxide, needs zinc and copper. Without it, I have too many oxidants in my body, which can lead to inflammation, which can lead to injury, which can damage my cells, including red blood cells, white blood cells, all kinds of cells, as you see from these symptoms. Symptoms. Moreover, collagenase, which uh, converts collagen type 3 into the stronger collagen type 1 to regenerate your tissue after injury and after inflammation, requires zinc. That's why without zinc, what do I get? Poor wound healing and poor tissue repair. Alkaline phosphatase, the famous enzyme in bones and in the biliary system, requires zinc as well. Alcohol dehydrogenase, which metabolizes ethanol, and lactate dehydrogenase, important in glycolysis, it makes lactate from pyruvate, also requires zinc as a cofactor. We talked about the symptoms of zinc deficiency before. One genetic disease of zinc deficiency is called acrodermatitis enteropathica. Acro means what? Uh, the tip. Oh, the tip of my extremities are having dermatitis, skin rash, and entero, intestine, pathy, pathology. So it basically means I have skin rash at the tip of my extremities and I have gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea. Poor wound healing, poor immune function, loss of smell, loss of taste, no body growth, no sexual development. Dermatitis chelitis subjective tinnitus, the earliest symptom of all is probably the dermatitis. Back to acrodermatitis enteropathica. What's the problem? It's a genetic disease, autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance where I cannot absorb zinc in my gut. By the way, you can download these handwritten doozy notes on my website, metacosisperfectsnetics.com. Now let's talk about the zinc finger. You will recall that we have lipid soluble and water soluble molecules in the blood. Since your blood is made of plasma and the plasma is water, if you are water soluble, no problem. Water in water, everything is hunky dory. But if you are fat in water, well, fat and water do not dissolve well together. Therefore, someone has to carry you and that's a plasma protein. But once you reach the target cell, the cell has lipid bilayer membrane. So here is lipid and here is lipid bilayer membrane. Lipid and lipid, they can diffuse like a sharp knife through warm butter. No problem whatsoever. And then inside you will find your receptor and you will work through a zinc motif. Now what are these hormones that have the receptor inside the cell because they are lipid soluble? They are steroid hormones. And I mean cortisol. I mean aldosterone, the adrenal androgens, the testosterone, progesterone, the estrogens, etc. So all the androgens, all the estrogens, the progesterones, all of them are steroid. The thyroid hormones, the fat-soluble vitamins, D, K, E, A. All of them have their receptors inside the cell, not outside, but inside. And then when you hit the nucleus, what's going to happen? You will operate a zinc finger, which contains zinc molecules. If you are zinc deficient, your zinc finger will be deficient. And your thyroid hormone or cortisol or fat-soluble vitamins might not work properly. One of these fat-soluble vitamins is vitamin D. Where's the receptor? Inside the cell. The receptor needs 
A zinc finger. Oh, 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 oh. What if my zinc finger receptor is mutated? Do you think vitamin D can bind? No. Do you think my bones are going to grow? No. That's why one of the causes of rickets is a mutation in the vitamin D receptor. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Here is everything about zinc again. Please pause and review. One of the trace elements is cobalt. Another one is cadmium. Do you know the symptoms of cadmium poisoning? How about cobalt toxicity? How about mercury poisoning, arsenic poisoning, copper toxicity? You can learn about all of these toxicities by downloading my toxicology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Or you can click on the join button and choose the highest tier to gain access to more than 300 premium videos right here on YouTube. Please subscribe, hit the bell, support the channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.